All right. Well, I'm Pam. I am the State Urban Forestry Coordinator for the Department of Natural Resources Division of Forestry, Community, and Urban Forestry Program that we call CUF. Okay, that's just easier. Um, and I've been to New Harmony a lot in the last six months, but I've actually been here nine times in the last few years. We assisted New Harmony in the very beginning with um, a lecture on how to draft and pass a public tree care ordinance. And it took a few years, but that was done. And then the Tree City and a couple of grant projects. And um, so New Harmony has just become a town that we've been watching. It's, it's a pretty town. It's a fun town to come visit. Everyone's always so nice. So we thought, you know what? In the year, let me see, I want to say it was 2000 or 2004, we did the first public tree inventory with volunteers from New Harmony. I think it was in 2000 because we did it with pencil and paper because that's what we used back then. And then come 2011, we used palms, palm pilot, handheld computers to take up the data about every tree, the tree's name, its address, um, its condition, what problems it was causing the town, what problems the town may be causing the tree, all of that type of information. And then, because technology has moved so greatly for us with urban forestry, we were able to pull what we call an iTree Streets analysis. And that means that every tree that we inventoried, we know not only its size and its species and address, we know how much carbon that particular tree stores, how much stormwater that particular, particular tree intercepts, how much air that particular tree cleans. All of those good things that trees do for us, you'll know it per tree. And we're going to be giving the park board a CD that has the inventory on it and all these reports that tell everything about the trees that they're doing. And tonight we're going to look at like the total population of the trees in New Harmony. And um, let me go into this here. Before we started to do the inventories, we had a little training session with the Palms and the district foresters. This is Janet Egger, one of our district foresters, where we taught the team. We had, I think, four teams that day. Taught the team how to measure a tree with a Biltmore stick or a D-tape, um, how to punch the stuff in. I think that's Barbara's hand, punching the stuff in on the palm, <laughs> possibly. And what was really cool about this is generally when we do tree inventories, we walk miles. But because this is New Harmony, we got to use the golf carts. <laughs> and that was, that was so neat. And I got to tell you that the three district foresters I brought with me, Jenna Egger, Donna Rogler, and Don Stump, and yes, that's his really, real name, Don Stump the Forester, had never been in one of our urban forestry communities, hadn't been in one of our tree cities, and done any urban forestry work or work with any volunteers. And they keep emailing me and telling me what a great time they had that day. And they were so impressed with the help that we had, and New Harmony was such a friendly place. But anyhow, we started out with a training session and uh, talked about how each tree was going to be given an address, we were going to measure the tree, identify it, note its condition, its stresses, all that information, its location, um, you know, is it a street tree, is it a front lawn tree, where its location was, and all of those parameters are very important to collect so that we could do the iTree Street analysis. So I'm going to give you some of the New Harmony stats. Now, this is what the trees are doing annually for New Harmony, and we're going to talk about these as we, each one as we go on. Um, over 3 million pounds of carbon stored annually, annually, just from your little street tree population of 593 trees. 1,086.88 pounds of air cleaned, and even as beautiful as this town is, you have hydrocarbons and air pollution from vehicular traffic. 
2,312,082.70 gallons of stormwater intercepted. And I'm going to talk about later why that is so important. $16,118.61 value of aesthetic and social. And aesthetic and social, that's kind of, you can't measure it in pounds and gallons. So they put an economic value on um, real estate and how it sells if there's a healthy tree population, on how businesses will relocate if there's a healthy tree population, and people will shop in places where there's a healthy tree population and spend more money. And that research is from Kathleen Wolf at um, Washington State University. It's research that is now going worldwide. She does this incredible research. And you can just get on her website and learn all that. We inventoried 629 spots in the community. It took us a day, probably two days by the time you guys did, did all of yours. Um, we found, and this is what's so neat. This is what shows the work this town's been doing for the last few years. We found 36 vacant tree sites. That's not bad at all. Your town is about 94% fully stocked of trees. That's a good thing, but it's going to change. Um, you have 17 large vacant tree sites. That means sites that can accommodate hackberries, oaks, you know, the large maturing species. 15 medium trees like redbud. Those are what we call medium species of trees. And then 17 small tree sites like serviceberry would be a smaller tree. The total tree count, again, you have 593. Back in 2000, you had 581. So you're up in your tree count because you folks have been planting trees. I'm always hearing when I talk to anybody about the trees you've been planting. Um, we saw some unique issues as we were looking at the trees, and this is kind of one of my, one of the neat pictures is this tree is pretty healthy, but it's eaten this fence. And we don't think that trees do grow up and trees actually eat things. And what I mean by that is they grow around things. And that tree was, was healthy, yet, you know, the fence it had grown around the fence, and that was just kind of a neat thing that, that we happened to look at. The species results, and this is really, really important. As you look at Acer, 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 what might that tell you? You have a monoculture of maple trees, the genus of Acer. Um, does anybody know what? that tree is, that leaf is? Yep, that's a sugar maple. That's your main species, is sugar maple. And then you're going to go silver maple, and then red maple, and then the next one here, those are crab apples, red buds, golden rain tree, red oak, tulip, hackberry, other oaks, and then um, other species of trees. And the complete species list is in the CD that, that I have for you guys and in some of the reports. Now, having these big maple trees as your main tree in this town, it's a blessing and a curse. The curse part is there's a bug coming to Indiana called the Asian longhorned beetle. And I brought a pest alert about the Asian longhorned beetle. And its favorite tree to chew on and kill is maple, any maple tree. That's just its favorite tree. It also really likes birches, Ohio buckeye, elms, horse chestnut, willows, ashes, European mountain ash, London plane tree, mimosa, and poplars. This is a bad bug. It's worse than emerald ash borer. Emerald ash borer we now have treatments for. And by the way, I brought some emerald ash borers, a couple to, for you to look at and to keep. They're based in some sort of acrylic thing. And um, so you can look at that later. But there are treatments now to control infestations of emerald ash borer if you have significant ash trees you want to save. 
if you have, say, a 20 to 22 inch diameter ash tree, it's going to cost you $220 every two years to treat that tree, and it, wouldn't, it won't have emerald ash borer. And if it's infested with emerald ash borer, that will kill. This benzoate product will kill the emerald ash borer. So there's hope for our ash trees in that way. 